Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, back with another Kamehameha Project video. Now, this is a video I probably should have done a long time ago, but this is more like a beginner's type of um thing, so anybody that actually is like at least you have some idea on how to really try to set up a team and all that. It's not necessarily a video for you, but um you could watch it if you want, and then on top of that too, like have some engagement in the comments if if need be. But um this is generally just to set up um different characters and trying to get people to at least get the hang of doing that. Now to start off, I went through and just wiped everything as much as I possibly could from um the party I currently have set up. That's why it has a power rating of 1619 when it comes to building teams don't pay attention to your power rating at all you don't need to worry about your power rating the only rating that you really need to worry about on this bar is your rank once you hit rank 140 you can access everything in the game but um the power rating right here where it's 1619 you don't have to worry about that honestly you could do some of the easiest stuff in the game, like epic quests, with barely any power at all, if you know what you're doing. So, that's something to know. And then even some of the harder things, too, is like, you can probably have a team of 50,000 power and still be able to survive pretty well in Malicious, which is like the hardest raid difficulty we have. So, again, know what you're doing, there you go. But, um, starting off, this is assuming that you've already went to go grind some of your stuff, so, of course, like... You've went and got some stuff from Epic Quests or the raids or whatever. But generally, we go to the party screen and you're already seeing that I've removed so much stuff as much as possible. Now, I'm not going to set specific type of thing. I'm just going to give you a general like overview of it. So, basically, you do want to focus on your main members first. So, I'm going to hit this change all button just to make it a little bit easier. And I'm going to kill all my filters just to have um, an R team because even if you don't have SSR, you can still go for R characters. But um, now filters is going to be your best friend when it comes to this type of stuff, so get used to setting all that. You see all the different types of things for the filters. I usually don't pay attention to type anymore unless I'm doing like guild order, so there's that. The specialized weapon's good for when you have like if anybody gets a lucent weapon, but you don't get too many lucent teams or whatever, so. There's that, because Lucent's best done with SSR characters, and they're still pretty picky on what they like. But, say you want, for an example, a guild order team that has, like, okay, you have our Kamihime offense and fire. Set it like that, there you go. And then there's, like, ten offense right here. But, just sticking with um this element, I'm gonna go try and do this with um, our Kamihime, so... Here we go with this one. Of course, you'll get more characters as you go through the game, but starting off, I can tell you right off the bat, you're going to want a healer, so definitely try to pay attention to what some of these characters do. Like, she heals and debuffs, and it's not too bad for our character. And then she heals, but um, she can also give um energy drain to her burst, and then immediately burst. So if you pay attention to different things that the characters do, like here's another... One where it's like, she heals based on the burst damage that you do to enemies. So there's like three different bursts that you get, I mean three different heals that you basically get, and there's different stuff that they do. Now, if you want a healer and a buffer, she might actually help out. If you want a healer and debuffer, then this is where she's going to be basically. If you want like somebody that can heal but also do some sad stuff on her, on her own. This is what I mean by paying attention to what you do, because this is just the healers. And then there's other characters that may actually heal when you deal damage or some other sort of thing as well, so keep that in mind. Because not all the healers are going to have the heal function right right here, so that's something to know. But just starting off, I want a healer, I'll put her in. I usually put my healers in the back, but it doesn't really matter, because um, what matters most is how fast they fill their burst gauge. Like... If I'm using her instead, she would be in front. Because she can fill her own burst gauge. So that really helps out. And then the excess she gets will go to everybody else. 
So that's something to know. Now, I do also want a little bit more debuffing usually, so... Not the best example, but this will probably be one because she can do a lot of different debuffs. Low chance of them happening, but there you go. Debuffers will usually be somewhere in the middle, but um, that all depends. Then I want somebody that can, like, maybe do some buffing for the team, like this one. So she buffs attack and defense, and then she also deals some damage, so there you go for that. And then the last one, I generally want somebody that can actually, like, fill up burst gauge usually. So she's got combo rate right there in front. So, that's just a quick little overview of how you try to set up your teams and all that. Just go for what you want, and then try to arrange them in ways where it, like, fastest burst gauge feel to slowest, if that helps. Like, for instance, if I wanted to go a different a different route with um, debuffing, then I could put this one in place of her. And it's easier to swap out if I want to, like, do some quick changes like that. And then subslots don't really matter too much, just try to set them up for whoever you whoever you want. Like, for instance, if I want the other two healers here, I'll put her here and her here. It doesn't matter which order. It's just whoever you want to come out first. So, I have all that. Now, next step is to pick a soul, and I'm going to stick to the first tier of them, which is C-Class. So, that's just going to make it a little bit easier. So, basically... I got all this type of stuff. Notice how I don't really have a character that has coverage or anything like defensive coverage. So, in those cases, you probably take another healer or you go defense. But you can also have other things you want to, like, for instance, like, this is a line that tends to go, like, combo rate, um, her, and then maybe some burst gauge fill. It depends. If you want to try and go towards this one where she can self-heal, and then eventually... Like, the um, S-Class version of Herd's got a lot of different things based on this second skill, which is Snatch, which ups drop rate. It all depends on what your souls want, too, but... Say I want some defensive capability, here you go, right here. And then just swap her in. Now, it's, immediately when you switch souls, it's going to ask you if you want to put a weapon on them. Do so. Because if you don't put a weapon on them, it's going to toss whatever element they normally would have, instead of you having a choice on the element. Which is a nice little lead into the weapons, because the weapons is another really big one. So, I'm going with a fire team. I'm not even going to worry about anything that isn't fire. So, there you go. And I can even put in, like, cheap fire weapons like this if I want to. But, generally, this is where you need to start paying attention a little bit more to team building, because you got weapon skills on all this stuff, and... Starting off, you're going to want a lot of assault, maybe some defender... But then when you get the later stuff, you'll get cer certain things like this. Rampart says Vigor. It's Vigor plus um Defender, I do believe. And this one's just like Assault Defender. You'll find a lot of them that have two skills. But this one has three effects. You have to check the details on your weapons if need be. Like, this is Vigor, HP, Defender, and Assault all in one weapon. And you don't necessarily have to use those. There's soul weapons too that you could probably sip and use if you have the um the A A class or the S class to match it. So this will be like the um I do believe the A class defensive soul weapon. While this is an S class one. They won't do anything unless you get the matching soul for it, so pay attention to that. But when it comes to building your team starting off, soul weapons probably aren't gonna be in your inventory. Some of the Hime ones aren't too bad either, so I would do something like put this here. Now, there's the main weapon, which is the easiest part. The sub-weapons... Do not ever use this auto-set. Like, for anything. Do not use auto-set. Build it all yourself. Auto-set is very horrible at doing this type of stuff. So... Do the auto-set once for your, mi for your mission, and then start building stuff yourself. Don't rely on auto set or you're really going to make yourself a lot worse. It just picks the stuff with the highest power and it's not necessarily the best output. Because if you look at these weapons I've managed to get, I got other stuff too. Like some of these you'll get from like, like this is from like an event. And then I do believe this was from an event as well. But then there's other weapons you may get from like, this is from a character. This is from a raid. So on and so forth. 
So now I generally want to try and pick different things that got different effects. Like there's vigor, there's vigor with um, strength happens to be a soul plus defender. But I got a video on all the different weapon skills. You want to learn a lot more about that. I'm just going by assuming that you already know. But there's that. I can put this in here. And resilience, I do believe, is um. Assault plus, um, Resilience of Dubly is Assault plus, um, Ascension. Just a quick reference for that. But yeah, I can put this in here. Then I'm going to put this in here because it has Stinger for another multiplier. It's not a, it's not a large Stinger, but it's still a good one for helping that out. And then I'll put this one here. But the interesting thing is, notice how I'm setting all glaives. Because if you happen to have enough of the same type, like for instance, I'm going to sort this out by glaives. Now, if you happen to have enough of the same type, like see, I got five glaives right here after I put this on. Once you get five weapons of the same type, if you want, if you want, you can do this, where the um, Ragnarok raids will give you a phantom weapon. Occasionally, you do have to try to um, get those. Now, this random weapon is a lucent one. I haven't finished it off or anything, but um, if I want to, like, say, glaive characters, that's where I toss a lucent weapon in, but I'm more focused on this because this needs five other glaives in order to get its, get its effects, the um, second effect. The first effect always boosts the pow power of all the glaives, so. This is a pretty big um, stat spike right there just off of that. So there you go with that. Now there's some other stuff I want to toss in just to fill in the gaps. So I'm going back to my fire weapons. And then I can toss in this because say I want more HP, there you go. And then I can toss in this one as well. Which happens to be even more HP. And these are generally the same, but um, since this one's skill level 30, that's the one I'll probably choose. So there you go. And then I basically built my weapons. Now, once you do all of that, you can check these details. And see, like, different things for um, the different characters and all that too. Like, for instance, the souls. You can set your um, EX ability and all that type of stuff too. Like, if I wanted her to remove debuffs, then Maiden's Prayer would be a good one. So... I'll leave that as is, but with the characters, you can toss in accessories, and these will complement off your um, weapons and all that type of stuff too. Like, I don't have too many um, accessories right now because I got rid of a lot of the ones, but um, generally you get those for the extra stats and all that type of stuff too. So there you go for that one. Now. Accessories, you kind of want to go for tiaras. It wouldn't even matter which ones until you get, like, at least able to grind Accessory Quest 7. So you can start getting the devil stuff. But, um, generally with accessories, you want to try and match tiaras. If a character has an incredibly high combo rate or guaranteed, then you're probably going to want to go to something like Bracelet. But, um, there's an accessory video for all that type of info, but accessories do complement your characters a lot, so there's that. It also bumps up their stats, and when it comes to all this stuff, their base HP and attack will get multiplied about a lot of this stuff from here. So don't neglect your base stats once you get to a point where you can get a lot of them. Like, for instance, when you get these little phantom weapons like this. Like, that Phantom Weapon is boosting a lot of base stats. So, there you go for that one. Another case is if you happen to have, um... Like, for instance, I have this weapon at, like, 5 stars. And it's called, um, Final Break 2. That's a huge base stat spike for that one, too. That's probably the point where you worry about base stats, but don't worry too much about it if... If you're still, like, in the lower parts of the raids. Once you get past the, um, Guardian Raids of the G+, that's probably when you need to pay attention to that. But, um, there's more to it than that, too. Um, your Eidolans, this is where you, you get some interesting stuff. Now, always set your main one first. 
And since I'm focused on fire, I'm only going to go for fire. Now, depending on the main one I put in front, is going to determine how things play out. Because there's different effects for all that. I've done a video on that type of stuff. But you need to pay attention to what you set as your main. Because if I do something like set this one as a main, then all my weapon skills are going to get a lot stronger. And it generally wouldn't matter what my sub slots are at. Are at. But if I set this one as a main, she needs matching sub slots to get more powerful. So, for instance, if I set her as a main, her effects are going to get stronger based on the number of fire adorns I have. And it goes up to that 140% elemental. So, that said, I'm going to want to set my sub deck as all fire. Just to complement that. Now, you don't have to go entirely all fire or all matching, but the general strategy is to try and get as much as that into there. So, for instance, I'm getting a lot more elemental attack by putting all these in. But me, however, if I have powerful add-ons from other stuff too, because you have to pay attention to their summon effects as well as their main effect and all that, then I would generally try and toss in some other ones too. Like, this is a very powerful one. And this is also a very powerful one. And there's others too. You'll learn that as you play and, and experiment with your own teams and whatnot. But generally, I basically set my team up where they have a lot of coverage where it's like debuffing, healing, buffing. Some has some combo rate even. But um, I got some like defensive capability as well. Then I got a good spread for weapons. And then I don't have also got like a lot of elemental attack from the main. I got some good summon effects from the sub deck too. Except for this one right here. She doesn't have too much of a good sub effect. But she's there just to help out with the um, elemental thing. And then I got these two down bottom who have very powerful summon effects. So general overview on how to set and do that. But once you set your teams, you can go to switch party. And you can start saving in the presets or start loading um, different presets. You have 12 of these parties right here on call. And then when you go into load save presets, you got way, way more. For instance, this is a team I've already set up for um, the Be Better Plus raid, which um, is the one I already changed out. So you can generally see how I got their stuff set up right now. And then I also have, like, the weapons are a little bit different, but generally... I use most of the same weapons. And then I still have the same coverage for characters, more or less. Like, I got some defensive capability for it. I got some healing. I got some debuffing. I got some buffing. Same thing. It's generally safe to try and cover as many ro roles as possible. But when you really get technical with teams and all that type of stuff, like, you focus all on damage or focus all on healing or whatever, when you get into specialized stuff, that's where you try to change out what you use. Like, for instance, like, if I'm having a whole bunch of healers, then I'm going to want as much ascension as possible on this weapon grid. If I'm having a whole bunch of, like, he made that do burst damage, I'm going to want more exceed. You get the idea with that one. So, you have to have a plan in mind on what kind of team you want, and then try to build around that. And that's how you generally do a lot of different stuff here. Now... Going into something that's a little bit more powerful would be, um, not that team, I want to, um, yeah, something like this. I mentioned a burst team. Well, here you go for that one. Like, this is a white burst team I have right here, and white's my best element, that's why it's got so much power rating right here. But, um, generally this team, whenever I go into, like, burst time, I can just burst four times out the gate. Like, literally full burst four times out the gate whenever burst time happens. They can still do it, like, three times on their own, so there's that. But, um, generally I have, like, a lot of Exceed weapons right here. Like, this whole middle column right here with the two axes and this lance is Exceed, so I've really hard focused on that Exceed. And then I got other stuff that gives me Vigor and all that. I can still get this weapon right here, which is the Phantom Glaive. At this point, you may or may not want it. Test it out and see if it works for you, but... Problem with me is the fact that if I remove this thing, just watch how much my um my base stats drop. 
And because of that, I've lost like 20,000 power. That's kind of concerning for different base stats. So that's why I keep it. Again, it's, I believe it's preference. But if you're trying to be optimal, you do have to test it out because sometimes it's worth it and sometimes it's not. So be careful with these random weapons. That's another general thing I have to say about building the teams and all that. Because look, I put it back on. I got a thousand more HP and almost ten thousand more attack. That's definitely noteworthy. If you want to be honest, I I lost like twenty five percent of my base stats when I took this thing off. I would need a lot of other stuff to replace that. So that's something to know. And then this is generally the same thing I've done with this team as well. I got like a main I doing and all this. This um, I don't want it's going to boost up my um, exceed even further. I got some um, elemental from this sub I don't right here. I could have put her as a main as well, but either way works for me. But um, generally, when you set all this stuff up, you want to try and like balance everything out. Like if you want to go full burst, then you want to set up and try and focus on that. But if you want to um, have like the easiest time without guessing then you do want to have a balanced team more or less like another example would be um let's see this team actually is pretty balanced because um this one has some bursting it has some coverage for healing some defenses this one in in the um, bottom right corner right here she's got some special type of utility as well which generally goes under debuffing so yeah, pretty safe team to set up and use for um some con content. I still have the um, burst thing though for all those weapons. But you notice I have this as a main. I don't want to just went full on white. But um again, it all depends on what you want to do with your characters and whatnot, and what team you want to really try to focus on. Because if you want to be honest, there is no real best team. It's more what do you want them to be best at. Do you want them to be balanced and cover all different areas? Do you want a lot of ability damage? Do you want bursting? Do you want normal attacks? It's all based on what you want. So definitely learn how to do all that type of stuff. Experiment with different things too because you never really know. You might find something else you might like. Like I like a lot of burst teams. Somebody might like a normal attack team. Somebody might, can, might like an ability team. Someone might find a way to have all three do a lot of damage. You never know. So, there's that. And then, of course, weapons, build them yourself. Build the weapon grid yourself. Build the adon grid yourself. Characters, auto set may or may not give you something good, but I wouldn't worry about it once you start getting a lot of characters. It all depends. But it likes mixing up a lot of different characters, too, sometimes, so that's a bad idea. And another thing that's a bad idea, never go that all setting. All will give you a random mix of elements and all that type of stuff. Do not ever do that. Because I even have um, a mixed team I can even show you right here. Because I do believe it was, um, yeah, this one. Like, this is a mixed element team. And they're not all that good. It's good enough to do ultimate raids, but that's it. And that's how much weaker they really are. Despite the fact that I get, this is a lot of weapons that give you different um, assault and even some defender boost to, to every single element. So there's that. And then this is a lot of different elemental spread. And then this special I don't want even gives a lot of boost to every element too, if done right. But it's a lot weaker than what you really could be having. So this is an example of not something not to do. So don't even do it. So I'm going to put this back to this one because um, I like having this team up for the um, Beth Plus raids. But I'm, I'm capable of um, participating and even doing every single um, malicious raid at this point. So there's that. I've even done a few videos on those too if you're interested. But again, generally try to build around a central type of focus, if that makes sense. And the central focus can be balanced, it can be burst, it can be heals, it can be like damage cut. Whatever you want it to be. Just know what kind of role you want to play with your teams. And it really helps if you know what your enemies are going to do. Because 
if for instance you have an enemy that is going to debuff you a lot characters that can remove those or even outright block them should be highest priority so that's something to know if there's a raid that doesn't have any rage bar like a fight that has no rage bar there's no point in having any characters have any rage fo focused abilities because they're just going to be much weaker so that's something to know like there's some exceptions to that rule of course because you may find a, a character that can bypass it but generally you want to focus on all that stuff like focus on what enemies do and how you want to go about that but anyways that's all for this more of this will come soon and again this is a video i probably should have done a long time ago but um it's kind of vague on how to do things but it's still enough info to get you at least an idea of what you're doing because again don't pay attention to this power rating i could spike it way way further if i really wanted to like i can take some of my best light stuff and give any team 100k plus power but they'll be doing way less damage even my light teams will be doing way less damage if i put all my best light stuff like stat wise so it all depends but um the other thing i can also say too is that if you don't want to accept it, your accessories from the party grid you can still do it from here like for instance I can click on this and I can go here and then I can just click and just give her an accessory there you go and I really do need to go get a lot more accessories especially since we got the fourth slot one but um that's mainly what I've been trying to get anyway is a lot of these fourth slot accessories as you can see and even fifth slot but they take a lot to level up but anyways that's all for this more of this will come soon. I've done other guides. That's going to be in the pinned comment. But again, experiment with your own teams and find out what works best for you. Because it does have a lot of flexibility on your different play styles and all that. Just know that some things absolutely will not work in certain raids. So you do have to know what enemies will do. But anyways, that's all for this. More will come soon and take care.